All right, I'm coming back. <laughs> yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean, Taz. Um, it is a small writers community, but I think it's, I think it's growing. I think it's growing fairly rapidly, um, as as far as communities on Twitch go. Um, and there are a lot of different writers, and they have a lot of different experiences. Uh, I mean, uh, Erica Drayton, who I uh, who I watch from time to time when I can. Uh, who was a pretty cool person. Uh, she, we were teaching her what fan fiction was the other day, which was extremely odd to me because I mean, I've grown up with the internet and fan fiction almost my entire life. Uh, I don't write fan fiction. I did a long time ago when I was 12 or 13, but I don't anymore because you know, I, I do my own thing. <laughs> I totally answered your question, Johnny. You didn't see the answer then. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of really cool people. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Thank, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Way to live up to your sword. I honestly forgot. 100% forgot. Is what it is. I'm sorry. All right. So yeah, let's uh, let's get back into some of this stuff. So that's what I do. <laughs> Just kidding. I set up this camera so I could show some stuff off. And I swear to God, I don't know why, but everyone wants to mow their lawn on Sundays for some strange reason. Not to mention, when I took the break, they stopped mowing, and now they're mowing again. What is this? <laughs> it's like they're out to get me. Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> I love puzzles. I do a lot of puzzles. They f I find they help me think. So I do puzzles. I was doing puzzles this morning. And I kept this here because I wanted to show you that you can use things that aren't necessarily creative. Um, or that you wouldn't consider it necessarily creative to push your work, to push your thought process. Um, I love puzzles. I do tons of crosswords, lots of Sudokus. This is uh, a Kankuro slash Killer Sudoku. It's like a way harder version of Sudoku. But I like lot logic puzzles and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like numbers. Um, I like patterns. Uh, that's what I, <laughs> I like. Um, but yeah, so there's that. So that's one thing. Um, but I had some other stuff that I wanted to kind of talk about and show. So I got kids books, kids books. Uh, on Norse legends, or sorry, not on legends in general, myths and legends. Some really neat stuff in here. Uh, I love looking at uh, this stuff. There's so much cool inspiration and things you can adapt and, and have been. <laughs> nice. Uh, you know, it, it's important to know Greek myths on a certain level. It's important to know the Bible and uh, certain things like that because there's a lot, a lot, a lot of reference to that kind of stuff in literature. And knowing that intertextual stuff is super important. It can influence your writing. It influenced the people you love's writing for sure. You know, learn, use that. Shakespeare wrote about this kind of stuff all the time. Uh, you know, he wrote about Cleopatra and he wrote about uh, the Battle of Troy and, and all that kind of stuff. He adapted things. He was not original. Not at all. But it isn't about the premise, it's about what he did with it. 
right? So that's one thing that I want to talk about. These are another thing. I got these in an auction at one point. Uh, it's like just a thing. But it's a, there are history of fantasy and science fiction. Uh, this one's on fantasy, the one underneath is on science fiction. Tons of cool art, stuff like that. Oh, look at that. Mists of Avalon. Cool. King Arthur. Once and future king. So much cool stuff in here. Yeah, I love these. Oh, Solomon Kane, Robert E. Howard. Excellent. Excellent. But yeah, so that's fantasy. This is science fiction. Old science fiction mags, analog. And I love this kind of stuff. We work in a connected medium. Your writing doesn't exist by itself. It exists within a cultural context of writing and 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 art and film and, and comics and whatever else, right? Battlefield Earth. <laughs> West of Eden, nice, nice. Arthur C. Clarke. Right? There's there's a whole context in which we write. And knowing where we came from is important. But knowing where our heroes came from is also important. Knowing our artistic lineage. Um, there's so many things that, that have inspired us as, as a people. Um, things like that. Uh, I've talked about some of this stuff before, but how if I write science fiction and fantasy, Orson Scott Card, love this book. I have two versions of it. Um, it's fantastic. Your feelings on Orson Scott Card aside, um, I, I understand he has some interesting views that I don't agree with, but you know he's a great writer. Uh, I picked this up a while back. I haven't read it yet, uh, other than like the intro. But damn, is it cool. Right? I like this. Uh, I need to read it actually, but yeah. But this, this is, uh, this is one of the coolest books on writing I've ever seen. Um, this book, uh, one, The Wonder Book, is all about imagination. It's about exploring your imagination. It's about not being afraid of exploring, of doing things differently, of doing the same things in, in unique ways. Uh, and, and that's kind of the, a, one of the main points I've been trying to get across in this kind of talk about originality and, and talk about inspiration is that it's about not being afraid. It's about not being afraid of doing something the way other people do it, but it's also about not being afraid of doing it differently. Um, yeah, I, I really, really like this book. It's really cool. So I, I can't say enough about this guy, but it is, it is super, super cool. I haven't read any of his other stuff, but I assume it's also good. Because I've heard the Steampunk Bible is pretty cool as well. Right? So in the, this, this sort of weird thought exploration 
uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm a person who really does well with telling, like saying what's in my head, saying it out loud, using that to define it, to explore things. I don't just sit around thinking like I need, I need that, that sounding board of, of another audience of, of, of a person invisible or otherwise, whatever. Um, I'm using this medium, this stream to formulate my thoughts, to, to get everything that's in my head out there so that I can form an opinion and hopefully inform others, uh, what I think and, and have that help them. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what this episode is about. It's, it's about, it's about exploration. It's about all kinds of things. <laughs> That's really cool. I've, I've heard the steampunk Bible is, is neat. I'm not huge into steampunk. Uh, I like it. There's some cool stuff that I really like in it. But it's not 100% my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> so. What else did I want to talk about? Um... Yeah, uh, I guess I also wanted to talk a little bit about writing resources. Uh, this is an issue of Writer's Digest magazine. It's the one I buy every year. I don't have a subscription to this magazine or anything. I do read it from time to time. But uh, the one I buy every year is the 101 best websites for writers. Because I like it. <laughs> I really like uh, the stuff that they offer in these issues. Um, so I guess I'll go back to my main my screen here but there's a lot of stuff on creativity and writing prompts and communities um, reddit made it this year I was really shocked it made me laugh but it's kind of neat reddit's writing subreddit right here <coughs> but yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of really neat places in here uh, so go talk to people learn um, Try things. Try things people tell you. Try things I tell you. Ra. I'm a streamer. You will do what I say. Ra. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, well, I, I agree with you. I think they're... I don't read it all the time. Mostly because... I wonder if I spend too much... I wonder if I spend too much time reading about how to write and not just writing. <laughs> but their books on writing are very, very good. In fact, um, several of the ones I just showed you, uh, including the Orson Scott Card writing science fiction and fantasy, um, and the book on monsters are books from the Writer's Digest series uh, of books on writing. I have a couple others as well. Uh, but yeah, really neat. Good stuff. So. <laughs> oh yeah, totally, Taz. Um, that's an important part of, of what I was saying about the blender and all that stuff. Take, take things from other mediums. Take things from other genres. Influence your writing with them. Uh, the one I like talking... Well, I guess one of the most important ones... That to do that was Star Wars. Star Wars is a science fiction, space opera, but it's really a fantasy movie, not a science fiction movie, right? Like the way that it's presented and the way that that universe works, it really is a fantasy movie. It's super influenced by that. And I think that makes it more interesting than if it was just a straight up science fiction. Um, blending all those pieces, all those pieces that inspired you really, really work or can work if you do it right. And they can certainly make your work better. Mm. 
Ooh, cool. Gadgets. So I went to Seven Sanctum. I love Seven Sanctum. Seven Sanctum often makes the 101 list. Uh, it's a place with random generators of all different kinds. Um, I really like this place. It does so many cool things. Oh, whoop. That was wrong. Here we go. So I've come up, I have a list of gadgets here. I'm gonna do uh, probably like one or two. Uh, and in the effort of not being super judgy about ideas, I'm just gonna pick the first two. Do some short ones. Keep wanting to write names that start with B. It's really weird. Really, really weird. Pitch some drowning. I don't wanna. Maybe later. I will. It's not. It's not right now. Do a couple others. Let's go to another random generator. Uh, oh, okay, why not? Sure, if you want, I don't mind. Whoa. 
Hey, Bio, what's up, man? I'm doing well. Mostly because I'm allowing myself to uh, to be academic, despite my better judgment. Uh, I do, um, not always, but I do. I do keep quite a few fact books on reference. Um, what do I have? What do I have? Um, well, I love books on mythology, so I have tons of that stuff. Um, but I have. things like uh, this. History books, cultural history of American movies. Um, uh, I was just pulling out some stuff that I keep around. Human skeletal remains, an old history of the modern world, some neat stuff in there. Old books are really good for this kind of thing. Um, Psychic Discoveries Behind the Iron Curtain, uh, actually written by two doctors, uh, totally supposed to be a real thing, I have no idea. Um, so yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, like lots of cool stuff. This is too big a pile. Um, stuff from university, uh, technology, technology science, technology. Yeah. I mean, I have books on geography, languages, art. Anthropology, martial arts, science, psychology. Yeah, lots of stuff. Um, I think I think designing things from facts is awesome. I don't use these as much as a lot of people do. I tend to do uh, be more of a premise guy and things like that more than a fact guy. So I I tend to use that kind of stuff, but. There's definitely, there's definitely a benefit uh, 
to do your research, just research in general. Super important. I have not read that, no. I've never even heard of it. I'll take a look at it later. For sure, um, and where where you get your inspiration from doesn't matter. Uh, do what works for you. Do whatever works for you. something I was thinking and I can't remember what it is oh well what else is new um yeah Ooh, currency I like currency currency is cool
stretch. All right, so that's cool. There's uh, there's another six prompts from just random stuff that on Seven Sanctum. <laughs> yeah, I actually am pretty happy with them. <laughs> and, th and that's kind of my point, is you can design a story off of this, or this one sentence, or whatever. It's... You have to, you have to put something down on the page, or... <laughs> Like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. This is the way I write. I, I write in this, like, mindset of just put something down, and then you can put something else down, you can put something else down, and, and build a story. <laughs> um, Right? And maybe that's just me, but <laughs> it's the way I think about it, for sure. are good sources of thought or inspiration. Um, well, I know one.
Here you go. TVTropes.org. I love this place. It's, um... Tropes are kind of a unique thing in, uh, in storytelling. Where they're a figure of speech, a concept that reoccurs. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> I don't know, I had a thought. People are sending me stuff. Yeah, I do lots of work with art prompts. <laughs> art prompts are good. Looking at an image and describing what's happening, a uh, fantastic way to get an idea. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. So, and I, I know exactly what this is, Ryan. Know exactly what this is. I'm pointing my finger at you. You can't see it because it's below the frame, but I'm pointing it at. Have I ever used songs as prompt? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Folk album. <laughs> so, you know, songs can be great inspiration. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's my entire thought about that. Songs are a great inspiration. Like I was saying before, I think anything. can be an inspiration. The person you see walking down the street, your next door neighbor, the weird sound you heard last night, the dream you had, the thing that sits on your desk. <laughs> they can all be in inspirations for a story. Not to harp too much on it, uh, there's a whole section of fan fiction called Song Fix, which is entirely based on that concept of using a song as inspiration.
Oh man, I totally just want to go entirely Book of Eli on this. No, let's go. Let's go the exact opposite. I I got an idea. Ugh. So, I mean, for me, this is like one part Book of Eli, one part 1984, one part Papers, Please. Because <laughs> I really like that game. If you haven't played it, it's really neat. Um, but yeah. These are things that, like, I'm I'm trying my best not to think. I'm trying my best just to put something out there. Let my subconscious do the work. <laughs> Paper Sweet is an awesome game. I really like that game. Uh, you mean V for Vendetta? Or do you mean a movie called V? Because I'm a huge fan of Alan Moore. Like I am. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. If you read the comic, um, V for Vendetta, the comic, is extremely different from V for Vendetta, the movie. I consider them both good, uh, actually. They're just different. They have a different... Um, they have a different theme. A lot of the stuff, like, a lot of the plot is the same, but thematically they're very different. And it's very interesting. It's super interesting to me as a writer... Uh, how how the theme really changes those two movie uh, changes the movie from the comic. It's interesting. 
especially because Steam is one is one of those things that I don't want to say it gets it gets tossed to the wayside, but it's one of those things that we don't necessarily spend as much time on compared to other things like plot or character. But I think that's a great example because in a lot of ways, V for Vendetta is Alan Moore's version of 1984. It's his exploration of a similar idea. And Alan Moore does that a lot. Um, a lot of his stuff... Uh, I'm thinking of things like Lost Girls or The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Um, Promethea, to a certain extent. Tom Strong. Alan Moore spends a lot of time... Like, studying his subjects of appropriating, of adapting, of showing us those those other things, uh, that blending, you know what I mean? Like in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, he does it literally. He takes characters, uh, he takes uh, copyright-free characters uh, and, and, and writes them together, puts them on the team. He did a book, um, a comic series called 1965? Is that what it's called? I have to look at it. Uh, 1963. I was close. <laughs> Alan Moore uh, hates all movies made of his uh, works in general, uh, which is maybe fair, but you know he just he does he hates all of them by default, and asks for his name to be removed as much as possible. But that's my point. Is um, Alan Moore does that a lot. He's very good at analyzing and blending. Uh, that's what made, you know, uh, that's what made Watchmen 
so good. Uh, that's why League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I'm a huge fan of all of his work on on ABC Comics. Uh, so like, well, there's a reason for that, Taz. There's a reason for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like things like Top Ten and and all that are really really cool for that. The reason uh, he has no problem taking the residuals is because he actually doesn't get any royalties uh, for most of the stuff he published for DC, period. Because they uh, they shut him out. So he uh, he's never been paid for Watchmen beyond the first printing. A book that they reprint every year. <laughs> Yeah, uh, which is why he abandoned his, uh, he created ABC Comics, uh, and it was published under uh, then independent publisher Wildstorm, who were part of Image Comics, but when Jim Lee sold Wildstorm to DC, uh, he stopped the imprint, because he, he refuses to work with DC ever again. Which again, I think is somewhat fair. Yeah, well, see, the thing is, is uh, a lot of that stuff happened before the real, like, before Image Comics, before there was a lot of uh, creator-owned stuff. Like, all that's not as nearly as much of an issue as it used to be. Um like because of what happened to Alan Moore and because of Todd McFarlane and and uh, and Neil Gaiman and, and a bunch of guys, there's there's a lot more uh, yeah. God, I'm having trouble focusing my thoughts today, but the Image Comics, like um, I don't know if you any of you know the history of like the independent comic movement around that time, but. Image Comics were was created by six uh, independent uh, writer artists, uh, basically who were tired of being part of the big guys and not being paid for their characters and stuff. So they went out and they created their own studios to do what they wanted to do, write about what they wanted to write about, and they did. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, it wasn't six studios, it was five studios, but it was six people. And they fought. They fought hard for uh, royalty rights and a lot of stuff. Um, so, yeah. They've made a lot of changes uh, for, for the way that the comics industry works. So yeah, uh, it's just after two o'clock, so I'm gonna take another break. Um,
Really? You think current image is bad? I don't think so. Oh, you can swear if you want. I just don't bother turning the filter on and off. <laughs> I I wouldn't consider a current image all that bad. They've had some really, really good stuff in the last couple years. But yeah. But they're still making the stuff they first made. Like, Savage Dragon is still being published, and Spawn is still being published. And some other stuff, you know? So. Hard to say. Anyway. I'm gonna take that break. Drop 